What does this congressman? Welcome to 7 a.m. in my house. That's me, Josh Gottheimer. Six months ago, I left my job at Microsoft to run for Congress, which is a story I'll continue after everyone is at school. And this governor. We obviously have some people that are not vaccinated that have been admitted to hospitals. Are you going to sit there? Are you going to sit there and are you going to sit there and criticize? Or are we going to try to treat and try to help the folks? You know, I'm just sick of this judge. I'm sick of the judgment, the, the judgmental stuff um, on some of this stuff. Nobody's trying uh, to, 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 to get ill here, okay? Share in common. Well, it turns out that despite being a Democrat and a Republican, they tend to share a lot of the same ideas. Revealed by the fact that Democratic Representative Gottheimer decided to hire one of the former staffers from Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis, as you know, is the governor of Florida, whose disastrous response to the pandemic has led to countless deaths in his state. Jordan Colvin, who was hired by Gottheimer recently, served as the legislative director for Ron DeSantis in 2015, right before Donald Trump got elected. Now, as you may recall, one of the first things Donald Trump did when he got in office was to put a ban on immigration in the United States from a lot of predominantly Muslim countries, popularly remembered as the Muslim ban. What you may not know is that while Ron DeSantis was in Congress, he was part of trying to get a bill passed that would have done the same thing as the Trump Muslim ban. And as the legislative director for Ron DeSantis, I'm gonna go ahead and make a wild guess that Jordan Colvin was a part of this. But why would Representative Gottheimer hire this former Republican staffer? Well, you probably wouldn't be too surprised if you take a look at his campaign ad. Six months ago, I left corporate America to run for Congress. We started the campaign in my living room. I saw that when people sit down and work together across the aisle, you can balance the budget, reduce the debt, and create private sector jobs. Since then, I've worked at the FCC on public-private initiatives to spur technology innovation, cut unnecessary regulations, and strengthen cybersecurity. As a fiscally conservative and socially progressive Democrat, I know we can find common ground. So this is my take. Let's lower tax rates to help businesses grow and compete while closing loopholes that undermine the economy and invest in a future that creates jobs and opportunity. Both parties need to join together to stand with those who stand with us. This man worked under the Bill Clinton administration, used that to go right into corporate America, and then came right back to Congress. In a very unsurprising statement, this man refers to himself as fiscally conservative, but socially liberal which is something that I think many of us have heard. But I think we really need to understand what that really means and what people like this mean, especially people that talk about balancing the budget. Because it's strange, you know? Because these people will celebrate, sure, if there's a woman that's a CEO, or if there's a black CEO, or if there's a trans CEO, they will be totally on board with it. But when it comes to things like making sure that poor trans folks have the ability to access transition care, or making sure that black communities have real infrastructure or economic development, somehow magically the United States just doesn't have the money for it. So he says that he's socially liberal and would love to see all this progress and change, but golly gee, he's just not willing to pay for it. It's almost as though he's just not willing to put any material support behind the ideas that he claims to have. But this is really the situation with so many of these Democrats. They claim to be Democrats. They use this sort of veneer of, oh, look at me, I'm supporting working class people, and then turn around and do the bidding of these giant corporations. And this is why they have so much cooperation with these Republicans. They always talk about bipartisanship. But you'll always notice that their bipartisanship is always in favor of giant corporations and big businesses. Their bipartisan agreements are never things like, oh, let's do a guaranteed fruit program. Hey, let's do free college. Let's do debt forgiveness. Let's do literally anything to materially support working class people. No, their bipartisanship is making sure that corporate taxes don't get raised back to even where they were while Obama was president. People see the Democrats going out doing the exact same thing as Republicans because they bring on Republican staffers and then Democrats will get upset when voter turnout is low for them. And then they'll turn around and blame voters. I mean, seriously. These centrist Democrats turn around and try to blame the squad, Black Lives Matter, and people chanting defund the police for their losses when the Democrats running in the areas where there were those activist movements, they actually won. And the Democrats who were actively trying to distance themselves from it, well, they ended up losing. And they are shocked, absolutely surprised that People actually want to turn up for people who are actually challenging the system as it is and actually want to make the world a better place, but won't show up for these corporate goons 
who are willing to hire Republicans to help them with their policy ideas. This is Ben Carolla with Rebel Headquarters. You can catch my show Galaxy Brain every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on the Young Turks Twitch channel. You can also follow me on Twitter if you want to stay up to date with my content.